Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. Got a question for you. How much did you pay in bank fees and credit card fees last year? Waiting for your answer. You probably don't, you probably don't know the answer. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Uh, something to think about because they're all there. They're in business to make money off of us. We're going to talk about that today. And she's the woman behind 3B Financial. She's our professional of the year. Latanya Stewart is back with us. How are you doing today? I am well, Steve. How are you today? Very well. Very well. Yeah, this is uh, kind of mysterious when it comes to the bank fees. When we say bank fees, what what are we referring to? Let's let's go there first. <laughs> Most bank fees, you hear about the overdrafts. And that's where a lot of banks are making their money and they charge you every time. Mm. So let's say your limit is below, your balance is below $25. That charge comes through. Sure. But every time a charge comes through, they're hitting you with those bank fees. And I think it's around like $35 a hit. Yes. That can add up quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, actually got hit with one recently and it was because there was an issue with the auto pay. Something was up and I called, I'll tell you, it was uh, TD Bank and I called him up and said, hey, I've never had any issues. Can we waive that fee? And in a you know, couple of seconds, so yeah, we can take care of that for you. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And it's amazing just by making that phone call. They'll usually let you do it, but we have to be willing to pick up the phone and call and ask. Yeah. And by default or by design, eh, sometimes I'll make it easy to get through. <laughs> you know, you got to wait there. There's a prompt. I mean, Capital One is another bank I deal with. And whenever I call them and the, and the prompt start, I just sit there and I'm like, representative, representative, representative. Finally, oh, you would like to talk to a representative. What would you like to talk yes. about? Representative. I don't even want to go through the prompts. Just get me to a human and let's, you know, see a what we got. A human there. being. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, those fees. What else should be we be aware of? The low balance. And like I said, that that's what really gets people to those charges is because they have a low balance. They're not paying attention to how much money is in the bank. But then it's like looking at fee or banks that don't even have accounting fees. And you usually find those with most online banks and credit units. Your traditional banks, you know, the big ones, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, mm. you're, you're charged a limit. You're, you're being charged. But well, one of the things I did learn recently is if you do direct deposit, they'll waive that monthly fee. Because um, I think one of my accounts got below balance, transfer money, not paying attention, and they hit me with $15. And it was Chase. But to your point, I caught it was like, hey, can we waive this? And they did. But you get those monthly fees and you're not even paying attention. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the balance that you have in your account. Uh, meaning that your balance is below a certain number and that's that's a where certain threshold. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of and I, I have two businesses. I have one. I have two credit cards for business. One personal, technically two. One just floating out there. I haven't used it. Uh, in the longest time, maybe it's three, mm -hmm. maybe a three, two, I never use one is the main one. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what, and that's the scary part. You might not even know what's going on. If you haven't logged into those accounts in a while, that's, I think we need and to they do get that. you because they, um, you can go paperless. So we sign up for paperless. We have no idea. You know, many moons ago, everything came via snail mail. Yep. You opened up your mail and you looked at it Sure. now. I think everything is paperless, so we don't even bother to look. And yet again, you got to get in that practice. Everybody is nine times out of 10 carrying that fabulous cell phone in their hands. Download the banking app, click on it and look, because it's all right there for you. And yeah. it's literally now at our disposal. I love the environment. I, I literally hug trees. I'm not even kidding. But if I don't get charged extra to have something mailed to me, I usually opt for it. Because it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Now it's coming to me. It's also a record. I save things. I file them. Um, yes, I know it might not be environmentally sound. But um, but then on the flip side, there are some, uh, it could be your cell phone bill. If you opt for paperless, save an extra, you know, 5% or whatever it is. Yeah. Or the automatic payment, I think, for my cell phone is like I save $10 a month. You have T-Mobile, right? 
Yes. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> From Sprint to T-Mobile. But yeah, so it's like, okay, fine. But I've been with them forever. Like I said, I started off as a Sprint customer. Same. They grandfathered, you know, my plan over. So it made sense. Mm. But if the bill goes up like $15, I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? So I'm looking because I know what that monthly charge should be. And when it slightly goes up, I'm looking, it's like, okay, what's going on? What did you guys do to keep that cost down? I uh, I have to tell you, Latanya, out of all the bills that I have, the one I watch closest is the cell phone bill. I don't trust them. I just don't. It's all the time. It could be going up, going down. Like what, what, what are we doing here? What's going on? Cause there's so many hoops to jump through, you know, Oh, we can't do that on your plan. We can do that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to share this with you. Um, because it kind of surprised me and it's very recent. Okay. My son went away to college. His inter- internet wasn't great. He's going for computer programming. So it's, it's, it's important. And I decided as a gift, I was going to surprise him and give him uh, their home internet unit where they send you the, uh, it's, like, it's like a cell phone, but that's where you get your cell service from. So I call up, I'm like, how much is it? Uh, typically it's $50. Okay. We have a promotion. It's $40. Oh, really? All right. Hmm, cool. Uh, I don't have his address. He just started college. I'll have to get back to you on that. Two days later, I call and I get him on the phone and they're, they're, they say to me, uh, okay, sure. What, what price were you quoted? I'm like $35. I'm like, Oh, all right, great. Let me set that up for you. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. I should have said 30. Uh, <laughs> so they're just throwing numbers out at you. And the representative in another country really doesn't care because they're making commission and that commission is a lot for them. And, uh, so I just share with you the, the price you might think is fixed apparently isn't really fixed. I learned that with my cable bill, you get this two year plan every year, bill spikes up, I call. Yep. Like, okay, hey, my bill is over $200, why? Miraculously, they can get it back down to like 150, 125. Imagine that, how do they do that? (laughs) But you said you had no programs, but it's like, oh wait, well you've been a customer for X amount of years, let me see what I can do. Put you on hold, they come back and magically give you what you want. Mm. Latanya is wearing an orange sweater today. We're going to take it down fifty dollars a month. Hey, <laughs> whatever excuse they can. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's-, it, it's amazing what they can do for you, but you have to be willing. Yet again, pick up the phone, customer representative, representative, or keep it in zero until you finally get a human being on that yeah. end of the line. And with the cable companies, it's been my uh, experience that. You got to jump through the hoops, the retention department, when you tell them, yeah, I'm thinking about canceling. This is just not working for me uh, and all of that, but, but it's worth it. I mean, look at how much you're saving added up in a year. You know, it's, it's, it's worth every second bank fees. What else is going on there that we should be aware of? (sighs) Bank fees, students, because you spoke about your son. For those students that are in work studies through their college educations, sign up for bank accounts. And it's a good place to have youth learn about managing money. You've probably taken care of everything. Son's been great. Now he's off to college. Even if you're sending him an allowance every month, instead of doing these prepaid cater cards, let's open up a bank account for him. Mm. It begins to create the financial footprint. And then it's teaching him management money or how to manage his money, I should say. Because if you're giving him cash, cash in, cash out, hey, dad, I need some money. But when they have to look at what's in the bank and it's like, hey, I'm going to send you money on the first of the month, it allows the student to kind of pay attention. They can look at their spending. Now, most banks, it'll tell you the category that you're spending your money in. Most youth is primarily food. And even as parents, we can see what our children are doing. It's like, you've been asking for a lot of money lately. Why? What's going on? A lot of fast food there. Hmm. A lot of fast food. They're like, I don't like the college food. Uh I get it. But come on. Yeah, but but come on, I'm paying for the meal plan. <laughs> splurge but occasionally. You still now. Yeah, and and I I even said I even told him that I said you know splurge a little little bit you know because when I was there and checking out the area, it's a two minute walk to the main road and there's a bunch of you know different things pizza but he actually said the food on campus is is really good so he's happy with that but occasionally you know you got to treat yourself. Uh, but to your point, I still have my bank books when I was in my twenties, like literally the savings account. Um, 
And occasionally when I'm cleaning, you know, first of the year, throwing away files and stuff, I go into that folder and I take them out and I look at them. And I'm like, look at that. I mean, that's, that's what you were making back then. And how did you even, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Did you survive? Yeah, you survived. Exactly. Right. And then, you know, you see the, um, which you took out occasionally here. And, and uh, so it's interesting. And, and I guess it's a, you know, there's a, a quiet feeling of pride knowing that, um, you know, you had to financially take care of things back then. Um, so I, I do it would be, be the same thing. You know, if you, you save Absolutely. some of the statements from when you were younger, um, any uh, your fees, while well, we're talking about fees here today, uh, we've talked about subscriptions before getting a hold on that and, and dumping some of the ones that don't, support you, serve you, the ones you aren't using. Um, what are some of the other fees that we should be aware of, whether it's credit card fees, whether it's bank fees, any other things that, that stand out that we might be missing? ATMs. And it, it takes me back to the youth. They see an ATM, they automatically take money out. Make sure it's within your branch because you're being charged for that because it's an out-of-network ATM. Yep. You're getting charged there and be, they're out with their friends. It's like, hey, I need $20, $50, whatever. They'll stop at the nearest ATM, not realizing that they're going to pay a convenience fee just to get that money because it's right there in front of them. Yeah. Um, it's a catch-22 in that we should be using cash instead of credit, but then then you pay that fee. I have to honestly tell you, and I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but I haven't touched an ATM 20 years, 15 haven't been, haven't even pressed a button on one. I'm not even exaggerating. Oh, you're that one that goes inside the bank every time. Um, I use credit. And then occasionally okay. when I'm at the bank, if I remember, I'll take out some cash and I just put it aside, you know, not a lot, just enough. You know, if you go somewhere and, and, or if you buy a cup of coffee and I don't want to use a credit card because every transaction, obviously you're paying you know, a fee on that, but every transaction is one more that you got to keep track of. It's like, when did I go to the convenience store to buy coffee? Like, oh, that's right. Right away. My radar's up. All right. Who is this? What would you buy? Or you look on your, your statement, gas stations never say gas station. It's some no. company name like surefire looks. The heck is that? <laughs> some fraud yes. going on here. It's, hmm, it's about 50 bucks. So that it's, oh, gas. That was that day. But you know, so uh, I try, I don't go to the ATMs, but I try to keep cash, balance the cash between the, um, for the credit card. Just the, the, the fees are, when you start adding them up, what you're paying every month, whoa. I add up, and one thing is like when you do those gas stations, Starbucks, get the receipt. And most people don't. To your point, I'm a tree hugger. I get it. Get that paper. Because when you get ready to reconcile them, like you were saying, it's like, where did that money go? Where was I at? Um, one of the things I told a client, older gentleman, we got him an envelope that he kept in the car. I'm like, every time you go out, keep the receipt, just drop it in the envelope. Right. At the end of the month, we can reconcile your bank statements because hmm. he owned property. And we were trying to separate personal from business. Keeping those receipts made a world of difference. Wow. Because we knew what those transactions were for. We can say, oh, yes, I bought nails for the property down the street. Great. Or it's like I took clients out for a dinner. Whatever it was, having that paper made the world a difference. And isn't it true that um, if you get audited, they, they want to see receipts? You can't hand them your oh, credit yes. card statement. IRS wants to see receipts. Wow. Because wow. over the years, people have done, as I like to call, creative accounting. <laughs> <laughs> all these creative ways to cut back and save money you got to have the receipts yeah um i remember years ago people played the game married couples this year we'll get a return this year we don't so they decided if we're married or if we're going to file separately irs got wind so i tell clients be careful before you attach your pony to that wagon because once you legally change your name, you guys are bonded together. We can't pick and choose if we're going to file jointly or marry. We're together. you got to list both files, both social security numbers on that tax return. Mm. IRS is like, you're not getting away with extra money this year because you found that loophole to get a couple of dollars back on your tax return. Yeah. And, and it's also, 
you can be filing separately, but it's married separately. It's married separate. I learned of some people, older couple going through some things. The husband filed, married jointly. She filed a single tax return from two years ago. They're still fighting with the IRS today. Wow. Because now you have these two tax returns sitting out here. Can't have both on the same social. Tell me about what's going on with the, the IRS when, when an audit takes place or, you know, and, and let's say you were in the wrong, you missed something. And now, you know, there's a payment plan. Are they fair and fairly easy to work with? You have to have patience and willingness to sit on the phone on hold. And usually what happens is people get the notices, they ignore them and they get the garnishments at work. Now it's a major issue. Um, and I've seen garnishments in the workplace that have gone back three, four, five years. And now that, as I like to say, the world is open, the IRS are really digging into those back tax returns, Mm -hmm. doing audits, looking, and they're collecting now. So if you're going back five years, not only are you paying the debt, there's penalties and interest that are accruing daily. So it's worth, and I tell people, file your tax returns on time. If you owe the IRS, set up a payment plan. Because trust me, they're going to come after you one way or the other. And that's the federal and the state. You know, what's really scary about what you just just said. And I, I, I don't know why I never thought of it. That's why we're talking today. Um, you could be audited for something years ago. And in the meantime, you're paying, you're going to be paying a penalty on it. And you weren't even aware of it. Yeah. A friend of mine got a notice for unemployment. He's never filed for unemployment and it's $17,000. From three years ago, he was like, I don't remember filing for unemployment. What? <laughs> uh-huh. Got a note, got a letter from his employer. They're getting ready to garnish his check for unemployment. It was seventeen thousand dollars. Because he's never because they said he was overpaid. Crazy part is he never filed for unemployment. So to me, that's fraud. I'm like immediately I say call them. I'm like you might be sitting on hold. Call them if you're at work. Put the phone on speaker. Because I'm like, they're about to garnish your check and they can do up to 25% of your disposable earnings for something you didn't even do. So um, had this conversation with somebody, a similar one the other day, because she's about to file for unemployment. She took a leave of absence. She had a heart situation and then her parents got sick and she was on disability, but that was, I think it ran for three months. And after that, she just found out that they uh, terminated her. And, and in a way, she's okay with it. She didn't love the job. She was there like barely a year. It just wasn't right for her. Uh, so she's got to file and figure that all out. You know, at, when did they terminate her? Because they ask you, uh, when did you find out? <laughs> so like, but I had a small separate job that I got right before COVID. Okay. Um, then dur- because of COVID, um, left that job. So I was released. It was a small side job. Um, okay. I tried to file for unemployment. There was no, and, and there was an issue days on the phone. If you added it up days on the phone during COVID, which was, you know, crazy, crazy time. I never got unemployment. I never even got, I couldn't even get to them. Couldn't even. And now as I understand it, you know, years later, there is a, I guess a expiration date where you can claim benefits and that's a, It's a done deal. Well, see now, and they do it online. You have to submit your claim online. Yeah. Um, several years ago, I did it. And I remember just hours of sitting. They verified me through ID.com. And I literally, kind of like you and I, I had to get my passport and kind of show it to them. Like, this is me. For them to verify, I'm who I said I was. It was wow. incredible. And I'm like, all this for a couple of dollars. And I didn't even use it for that long. Wow. I was like, why did I even go through this process? But the thing is, when you work for somebody, you feel I've paid into this service. I should be able to get it back when I need it. Yeah. But they make it difficult almost to kind of get your own money back, if you will. Yeah, a- a- exactly. And I-, I get there was a lot of claims and everything during COVID, but at the same time, then automate it to a point where it's accurate and you can get some resolution because I was approved. But when I tried to claim benefits, there was an issue. A flag came up. I don't know what it was. Um, so I guess lost money. Fortunately, it wasn't a lot, but uh, very frustrating. Very fr- and, and then, you know, that, that I can't do anything now. You know, 
<laughs> I was actually thinking of hiring somebody just to be on the phone because I don't have time. <laughs> Not even kidding. It makes me think about, and you and I have talked about this, the credit report. Get a copy of your credit report. Yeah. COVID, I mean, people were making false claims. People's mail was being stolen. Mail wasn't being delivered. All yeah. these various things. Get your credit report. Like maybe 15 years ago, purchased my home. I moved out of, I was in an apartment. My W-2 went to my old address. Mm. Now I had got my W-2, filed my taxes. I owed the IRS that year, wrote the check. We were good. They sent me a letter telling me that they had two tax returns. I said, that's not possible. They said, I owed you. I waited until April 15th to send it and write the check. Somebody had actually filed a fraudulent claim with my W-2 and got back $7,000. Wow. So wow. now every year there's a fraud alert. I have, I get a pin that has to be put on my tax return. So yeah. Oh, that's what that is. I've seen that before. If you want to enter a pin, I never knew what the purpose of that was. Well, there's two pin. Mine is for identity. Um, The other one is a pin when you file it just so you can check your tax return. Gotcha. Wow. Well, the things you learn. Uh, and by the way, Here's a post-it note from the last time we got together. And the last entry up there says freecreditreport.com. And it's sitting here. It's on my list of things to do. And uh, yes. why wouldn't you? It's free. It's not going to impact your credit. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Part of it, we're afraid to find out. <laughs> you know? Exactly. We put our head in the sand. We, we close our eyes. Yes. We don't want to know. Right. Yeah. You Information is knowledge you gotta know because if not you're getting these things and it's like wait that wasn't me like interesting because my name is Latanya. i've had many variations of how people spell my first name mm -hmm. and it showed up on my credit report i remember when i bought my home i had to do an affidavit to cross out all these misspellings of my name just like yes this one is me but many years ago uh social security was cap sensitive. So it's actually L A capital T and there's no space somewhere along the line. Somebody doing data entry, put a space in between my name. So some people think my first name is L A. Like that's not my name, but even something that simple, it shows up on my credit report. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, know what you're talking about? My, my legal name is not Steve and my legal name. My ex has the same exact name. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's fun. Because <laughs> when they list it, you know, as former residences and it's the same address and then, you know, you only yep. differentiate, you know, it's, you know, male, female, usually that's not, especially nowadays, that's not <laughs> there. So it's only, you know, goes by the social. Uh, great tips today. Learned a lot. There's, uh, there's, there's money in them hills if you go after it. You know, be, be the fees and everything else. How do we find you, Latanya? And there's that's Latanya, no space in your name. Uh, how do we <laughs> correct? How do we find you? Best way is info at 3bfinancial.co, or you can go straight to my website, www.3bfinancial.co.com. And there's actually an information page that people can input their information, it'll come straight to me, and we can connect. Beautiful. Uh, wonderful talking with you. Thanks for all the tips and the advice. We have uh, things to take care of here from this point forward. Get that done. Save some money. That's what it's all about. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. It. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat. Aren't there? Rear-facing, forward-facing? I think I have it right. <laughs> Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. 
brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.